Hello, everybody. Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yee-haw. Thank you for joining me. It's Monday. On Mondays, we do tier lists. On Wednesdays, we do pink. On Wednesdays? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I can't speak. This is happening in real time. I have nothing in me, coffee-wise. I'm filling this up. I'll be right back. <sighs> On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Today, our tier list is a tier list of Pokemon you should buy. This is probably the number one question I get asked. It goes, what Pokemon should I pick up? This one or this one? Uh, followed by, of course, what items to run, what movesets. But this, I feel like, is my number one question when I'm streaming. I get DMs about it, so I figured this would be a great video to talk about that. And I'm just going to rank it in the order of a tier list. As always, you can buy any Pokemon you want. You can play any Pokemon you want. You can get to Master Rank with any Pokemon in the game. I've done it multiple times. I have a new series of that coming out soon. Uh, so in general, anything you want is totally fine. But I will give you my opinions on what are the best buys in the game. To the tier list! Here we are at our tier list. Our categories for today as simply the best tier. A, great buy tier. B tier, Still got a B tier. Could do worse. Don't buy first. C could do worse. D don't buy first. And then you get these for free, my dude. That could that could be like an F tier, but it's not an F. You get them for free. I gotta change the color on this. You're blue. Enjoy. Okay, here we are. Let's just first talk about the Pokemon you get for free. There are a few Pokemon in here that you technically get for free, but you only get one of them, so I'm not sure which one you got. Those would be your starters. Uh, but let's talk about the Pokemon the game gives you for free just by logging in. Alolan Ninetales, you get for free. Cindy, you get for free. Crustle, you get for free with the uh, Crustle event, little beginner event there. Greninja, free. You get that login bonus. Uh, Slowbro, you get right away. Venusaur, you basically get right away. And then you Zara Aura out of playing games, you get right away. Now there are a few that technically you could have gotten for free, but you may or may not have them by now. Greedon, you could have got with the Halloween event. Uh, your starter, either Pikachu, Snorlax, Talonflame, Charizard, or Eldegoss, you got one of them for free when you just started the game here. If you logged in with the mobile event when it first came out, you got Pikachu for free or the amount of coins if you already had Pikachu. Other than that, you don't get any of these other Pokemon for free. So these are all Pokemon you could consider buying. I'll go through all the starters first. Again, you're going to get one of these Pokemon for free, but all of the starters in the game are pretty dang good. I, I can't say that many of them are bad. I'll say this. Let's start here. Talonflame, I feel like, is a top tier Pokemon. Probably one of the best in the game. One of the best for solo queue. It might not be the top in five stack competitive tournament play, but if you're a five stack competitive tournament player, I don't think you are necessarily referring to this list about which Pokemon to buy. This is probably for people still climbing through the game, playing in master rank, solos, duos. If you're really interested in uh, competitive five team play. I'll talk to you about what some of those Pokemon are as well. Talon is not bad, by the way. Talon's pretty good, but it's not one of the most picked units uh, in, again, the top rank play of the game, uh, those competitive high level tournaments. Still a great Pokemon though, and I, I do see it picked up by some competitive teams. Uh, our next starter, let's talk about Pikachu. I would put Pikachu... Pikachu's probably in the B tier right now. B doesn't mean bad. These are literally in order. <laughs> uh, B doesn't mean bad. It's just the B tier. Still got a B tier. I think Pikachu is a very, very good Pokemon. It's not one of the top S tier, simply the best tier Pokemon, but it's very, very good. It got a lot better. Uh, the build on it right now, Thunderbolt, Thunder is really strong. It's very, very good in lane, but it... It lacks a little solo wise because you have no mobility. So in general, I think this is a very solid choice. I think B tier is a good place for this. And I would say the same thing about Charizard. Charizard used to be not so good. Let's be fair. Uh, Pikachu kind of fell into this as well, but Char had some problems for a little while. Now I think Char is a lot better, a little hard to solo at times. You just need a lot of experience with someone like Charizard, but I actually think Charizard is a really good 
pick up. I'd probably put it in the B tier. The nice thing about these, of course, is your starters are all 6,000 coins. So I'm not really taking into account on this list how much all these Pokemon cost. You, you know which ones cost a lot, and I'll try to mention them as we go. In some ways, you could say, why would I get a uh, Gengar and uh, a uh, Sylveon, both 10,000 uh, coin Pokemon, when for that cost, I could get three of the starters. And if you're just looking at it from that cost perspective, I, I couldn't really argue with you. So if you want to get the most bang for your buck, all your starters are only 6,000 coins. Uh, Snorlax. Snorlax is either B or A. He's really, really good. He runs into some of the same solo problems um, that Pikachu and Charizard does. In some ways, I'd rather solo out of all three of these, maybe even Char. Um, but in general, Snorlax, one of the best Pokemon in the game, used in high-level competitive play, and is good at the start of a match, is good at the end of a match. The only issue is you don't carry super hard with Snorlax, but if you need a defender for your squad, you do get two for free, Crustle and Slowbro. If you really want another defender, it's hard to say that uh, Snorlax is not a great choice for that role. Let's see, uh, what other starter am I missing? LD. LD is an interesting one. Uh, Eldegoss is one of the best Pokemon in the game, but solo queue, not one of the best Pokemon in the game. Climbing up through Master Rank the first time, he was one of the Pokemon I used the most because nobody ever picked a support, and I got really, really good with Eldegoss. That was probably my first main when I was playing this game, and I think it's either a great buy or simply the best. The only thing that steers me away from it being simply the best is it doesn't carry. So this is not a list based on what you would do in a solo queue situation. I'll mention that as we go. In solo queue, really, if you can, play a carry. Talonflame is the best on this board so far. Uh, of course, Zeraora, Greninja, uh, Cinderace, all really incredible as well. Venusaur as well, but you don't have to worry about buying those. All right, those are all of our starters here. And now we get into some of the bigger decisions, some of the Pokemon that people ask me about the most. I'll just pop Greedent on here right now because Greedent is very new. Greedent is either a great buy or simply the best. It is not necessarily an S tier Pokemon anymore, although it's really, really good. It solos extremely well. Still, the Belch Covet build is still very good. Its sustain is still amazing. It's hard to say that this Pokemon is not one of the top Pokemon in the game. You might edge it into a great buy category, but because it carries, uh, I would consider that a top tier buy. It's, you probably have it. If, you, if you've been playing the game, you probably have it. If you don't, it's really high up there. I'll speak right now about Decidueye as well. We don't know what Decidueye is going to be, but they have not released a Pokemon yet that is weak. They've released a Pokemon that doesn't work well in the meta, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but every Pokemon they've released is at least pretty at least pretty good to quite overpowered. And lately, they've kind of been leaning into the quite overpowered area. So I would say that Decidueye would be a top tier choice of Pokemon to buy. I don't know how quickly it's gonna get nerfed. I don't know if they're gonna release it super OP. My guess is they will. It will be very, very strong. So if you're interested in Decidueye, hold your money. Hold your money because I think Decidueye will be very, 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 very good. Okay. Let's see, after Greedent, let's talk about, let's talk about some of the all-rounders because I get a lot of questions about a few of the all-rounders. Lucario is one of the best Pokemon in the game. Great solo, great in coordinated teams. Its mobility is amazing, its scoring is amazing, its damage is amazing. It's just one of the best Pokemon in the game. And if you're looking, if you're choosing between any of the all-rounders, it is without question the best all-rounder. Again, one of the best Pokemon in the entire game. I'm not really ranking these in any order, but you could put it at all the way at the top here if you wanted to. So really amazing Pokemon, one of the best. If you don't have an all-rounder and you want that role, if you want to be able to play that top lane solo, Lucario is without question one of the best choices in the entire game. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. So we've got Machamp as well, and we've got Garchomp here. Great, so here are all of our all-rounders. I get a lot of questions about these two specifically because they don't make it to the tops of tier lists, uh, and they're really exciting Pokemon. Here's where you are with both of these. I actually think 
that Machamp probably hangs out in this B tier here, solo-wise, especially playing him a little more lately. I think he's very good. He doesn't make it into any of the top competitive team meta. You never see him in tournaments, but he's really good. The problem is, is his laning phase is hard, so you kind of have trouble early, but you also have trouble with Char early. Garchomp is an interesting one. I would, I like Garchomp, but if you were to ask me, he is the last Pokemon I would buy. The last. It's not that he's so bad you can't play it. You can get all the way to Masters with it. There are high level players that are very, very good with Garchomp, but you would, you would never buy this Pokemon first. So if you're comparing Garchomp to anyone, I would say buy anyone else other than Garchomp. And there are a couple Pokemon that I would put into the don't buy first category. One of them being Gardevoir. So I actually don't think Gardevoir is just absolutely awful, but if you're asking me who to buy, it would be one of the last Pokemon to buy. It's very, very specialized. It's really hard to get enough levels for it. It's just in a, a, a tough spot in the game right now. So if you were looking for someone to buy, I would not buy Gardevoir. If you're talking about an attacker that, that I would buy, I think Sylveon is up in the A Great Buy category. It's the same price as Gardevoir, and I think it works so much better in lane. You can jungle with it. You, you can jungle with Gardevoir as well, but I would always rather have a Sylveon on my team or play as Sylveon compared to Gardevoir, and it's because of that steep amount of experience you need to get. And even once you get it, I mean, Sylveon's good almost the entire game. It's a, It struggles a little bit for three levels, but once it hits level four, it's good all game. I would put it into the a great buy category, and I'd contrast that with someone like Gardevoir that I think is definitely in the don't buy first category. Another attacker that suffers in this game is uh, Cramorant. Cramorant was a pretty good Pokemon. They nerfed it a bit. It's not terrible, but it's kind of awkward inside a lot of games. It it's definitely someone I'd rather have on the team than Gardevoir or Garchomp. But at the same time, I just see so many other Pokemon I'd rather buy first. Again, Sylveon's a great example. And then attacker-wise, for free, you have Venusaur, Greninja, Cinderace, and Ninetales. So you have all these other attackers that you could play instead of Cram. Cram needs a little help right now, I will say. Uh, I would like to see a little buff four crams so that it could be a little more viable. Those are all of our attackers here. Supporters are gonna fall into a couple different categories. I'll bring them up onto the board here. We've got Mime, Wiggly, Blissey. All great Pokemon. I think Mime you could even put into the simply the best category as a buy. The reason being is, unlike Eldegoss, which you can kind of carry with, you can actually carry with Mime. So not only can you support your team in a huge way, but you can carry with it. It's either in the simply the best category or a great buy category, but no question, Mime is tough to play, but once you figure it out, one of the best Pokemon in the game, People don't often run supports. If they need a support, Mime is a great choice. You can take objectives, you can KO, you can score, you can help your team defend. I think Mime is an excellent, excellent choice inside the game. I think Wiggly, Wiggly and Blissey both hover into the a great buy and the B tier. The thing about the supporters in the game is they're all good. If I just had to rank them in order, I mean, I don't even, I wouldn't even want to put someone in the could do worse category. It's just not even reasonable. They're all so good. I'll put both of these in the B tier, but they'd be the highest people in the B tier. Highest people. People always make fun of me for <laughs> saying that Pokemon are people. Well, they're people to me. Uh, so Wiggly and uh, Blissey, I think are amazing. I think they're top B tier or the A great buy tier. I could seriously see them here, but just to give a little definition between the role here. I think Mime is probably the best to buy, especially if you solo, followed by LD. They're all great though. If you if you got any of them, they're all so good. Finally, we have two speedsters, two defenders. Absol, I actually think Absol is a B tier Pokemon for buying. I think it's really good. Solo especially, not so good coordinated teams. You, you never see a coordinated team but I think it's really, really solid. It's a specific play style. So you've really got to want to do this, get in, burst out a lot of damage. You know, hopefully you get some crits. I really like playing Absol and I think it's a super strong speedster. Our next speedster, Gengar, I think falls into the could do worse category. 
for a long time, I mean, look, as you can see, I'd pick up every speedster before I'd pick up Gengar, but I really like playing Gengar. I think it's gotten better and I would rather have it than both Gardevoir and Garchomp if I was looking to spend my money. So for me, it falls into the could do worse uh, tier right now. I've liked playing it a lot recently. So this is probably, you know, colored just by my experience with it. I think it's, I think it's on the edge. It's on the edge of greatness. And I would really like to see them do a little bit more to make this a top tier Pokemon. Our final two, Blastoise and Mamoswine. I'm gonna set them both in B really quick. So our final two sweet boys, Blastoise, Mamoswine. I would say out of these, gosh, they're both good. They're both good, but just to have a little, uh, a little break in the defenders because I've got one in Simply the Best, one in a great buy. I'll keep both of these in B tier right now. Blastoise was nerfed, but it's still really, really good. And Mamoswine is great. It's a great Pokemon. The order of this, again, any of this could shift. I don't really know where you put all this. You'd probably put both defenders here just because having these super tanky Pokemon is amazing. They can kind of carry as well. They really can. The The list here, as you can see, uh, a lot of it's based on carry potential sometimes because if you're, if you're asking me who to buy, you're probably not playing in a super coordinated group that needs you to play a certain role, right? So certain Pokemon carry better than others. With that being said, Snorlax, I don't love love as a carry. If you're looking for a defender to do a lot of damage, it would probably be Greedent followed by Blastoise or Mamo. Yeah, something like that. And then Crustle's in a league of its own. It just does its own special Crustle things. There you go. The Pokemon I think you should buy. Uh, I'm trying to rank it. Obviously, this is similar to a tier list, but it's also just based on actually putting money down for some of these Pokemon here. Mm -hmm. This is the part of the list where we kind of joke around and we see if we catch anybody. All right, and that's the biggest thing here with this top tier is that all of their Unite moves are devastating. Cramorant's Unite move, one of the best in the game, that zoning potential is amazing. Charizard is its Unite move. It is going to win or lose games based on it and you get to control that. Sylveon gets its Unite move at level eight. That is so huge, so it impacts the entire game that way. Snorlax, of course, you can go from zero health all the way to full, put a barrier on an ally and then come right back. It's like it's like you went to base, but you didn't. It wins games because of that. And all of these, because of their Unite moves, edge out people like Talon and Lucario, who are very, very good. And then of course we have the watch out tier. Everyone know, knew Gengar would be there. Everyone knew Garchomp would be there. But with the presence of Pokemon like Snorlax, it's hard to say that Mamoswine and Blastoise really are going to get much play at all. And then Pikachu, still a horrible Pokemon to buy first. Gardevoir, climbing the ranks a little bit, I would say. Machamp, climbing the ranks a little bit. Wiggly. Yeah, and then of course you get these Pokemon for free, my dude. So don't, but don't get any of the ones you get for free. If you do buy them though, neat little trick, you get their coins back. So that's pretty fun. You don't get gems back if you buy them. I hope that was helpful. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Actually, I'm going to do another tier list very soon with where all the Pokemon lie uh, pre-Decidueye. So look out for that. I love you. I'll see you all next time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kiss you.